those correlations we have contended are not broken. Those correlations are suspended while the market, again, recalibrates, rebalances at higher levels, okay? Normalcy will return after gold and silver are at their proper price. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancy, where each day he brings you the precious metals and financial news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancy, and today's morning meeting, we're going to talk about UBS giving gold and silver miners implicitly some love. And uh, we had previewed this on this program and in premium posts last week with an excerpt from that report that someone had passed along to us. But now we have access to the whole report, and we're sharing that with uh, you today. Okay, we'll also quick comment about the yen, and we'll touch on some uh, market driving news. All right, so there you go. UBS gives miners some love. All right, let's go through the markets now. While we're doing that, that's the Goldfix homepage. The dollar is down 42, impressively weak. Uh, my guess is that's yen related. Uh, the US 10 year is 462, down four basis points. SP 500 is up 11 handles. The VIX is 1525 up 23 basis points. Gold is 23.42, up $4.40 after being down around $9 last night. The buying, if you're interested, uh, started coming in at around 3 a.m., which is London time. So Europe and the U.S. are buying now. Over the last five years, it hasn't been like that. Silver, 27.40, up 20 cents. Copper, again, strong up 3 cents at 4.57. Oil is up 13 cents, 84.40. I truly believe that the Saudis and the U.S. are closer than people think. And they are pumping oil to keep a littleness during the whole Middle Eastern war thing. Old habits die hard, and everybody wants normalcy uh, when it comes to cash flow. That gas, 174, up three cents. Bitcoin, 62,283, down 789. A lot of bearish looking news came out this weekend on Bitcoin. Uh, the government is going to be regulating it more and more heinously, uh, meaning now that they've got the ETF started and they've got the normies in it, they're going to uh, slowly cut off and isolate and build walls around uh, the people that don't comply. And that would be in the form of uh, lowering ability to use it as collateral, uh, throttling connectivity somehow, uh, and... Um, just generally making it pain in the ass to use. And that's what they do. And then they'll come after you for taxes by, let me think about it. They're going to come after you with taxes by changing the settlement prices and how they affect. You're going to end up paying taxes on an annual basis on a spot product that you haven't sold yet, which is kind of screwed up. That's my guess. Ethereum 3162. By you, I mean me too. Uh, down 99. Palladium, platinum, both up. 959 in palladium and 932 in platinum. It's taken like five years for this to happen, but it's happening again, meaning uh, platinum should be more than palladium. And I've been looking at that for years and put a couple of trades on that lost money. Grains, soybeans up five cents. Corn unchanged. Wheat down 16. That's interesting. I bet you there's war and seasonality involved there. There's intermarket plays here. If you're not planting, if you're not planting soybeans or planting wheat, there, there's a lot going on there. You have to understand the market itself. Anyway, okay. Let's get to it. Oh, back to this. This page here, I repin this. This is a broadcast from last week, touching on the overview of what we're going to get into a little bit more of now. Uh, this is tectonic gold gyrations. Uh, Greed and Fear had a report, and we discussed that uh, with people in a post. And we put this out. There it is. Why gold, why now? That's a free post for everyone. And it gives, I think, a nice overview of what's going on in the world with regards to gold. All right, so premium. We have some charts. It's not all boring words. We have some charts here for you as well. This report is the best report on reasons to own gold we've ever seen. 
It touches on every reason described in Gold Fix for the last two years and serves as a vindication vindication of what readers have known for some time. One caveat, we are not telling you to buy miners. They are. It's a bold statement and not without risk, but there it is. Miners are near their lows with gold bullion near its highs, which is why we're thinking about personally, we're long miners, right? Shorting metal against long miners, but that's that's neither here nor there. All right, so... We're going to go through the contents very quickly and very broadly to let you know what's in this report. Executive summary, reasons to own gold. It goes through all the reasons in very overview fashion. Structural reasons, stuff that we talk about here on Goldfix a lot. Macro reasons, stuff that we also talk about here a lot. Flow mechanical reasons, the very tactical stuff. Fundamental reasons, meaning the miners themselves. Okay, uh, Then they get into the actual reasons themselves and... We're going to go through them with a quick comment so you know what they're really getting at here. Right? The reasons, central bank buying, not just BRICS, every central bank. And they're not all showing their hand. Unsustainable U.S. deficit, we all know what that means. What does it imply? Something will break. You can't keep spending the money that we are. China QE soon. China has economic problems. OK, uh, they're dealing with them. There's no crisis right now, but they're going to have to stimulate more. And that means they have to print, especially with the end getting slammed like it is. Bitcoin is not gold 2.0. Well, oh, there's a chart. We'll show you that chart uh, for a time period. People were saying gold. Bitcoin is gold 2.0. Look at how it's going up during inflation. Well, you know, it wasn't going up because of inflation. It was going up because of stimulus checks and retail get, being given money. Uh, the behavior in global panic, which is what you're seeing a little bit of now, tells you this, and they show a chart to that effect. Inflation targets will be raised, something we've also said here many times. Footnote, we, we, we say a lot of things here, say them a couple of times, and then as they start to happen, we stop talking about them. We're not talking our book. We're not selling advertising space. It happens, we move on, right? But everyone's catching up now and that's really kind of cool so inflation targets will be raised whatever they're saying now they will say something else later and before they change what they're saying now to what they're saying later they will start to permit things they didn't otherwise permit inflation's going to float at three to four percent if the federal government keeps Spending. I don't care what Biden's and not what Biden, what Hal says. Unless you're changing the numbers, you can't get inflation down to two percent with unemployment this low. Low unemployment means high inflation now. Meaning the economy is a three-legged stool. The GDP, how it's doing, unemployment, and inflation. And if you continually lower two legs, the other legs got to drop. If you continually raise two legs, the other legs got to raise or the whole thing tilts and doesn't work. OK, so we've had low unemployment for a long time. We've had low inflation for a long time. OK, and we've had high uh, GDP. Well, the GDP is now higher. And the unemployment remains low with the inflation high. So either people have to get fired or inflation comes down. If people get fired, GDP comes down. If inflation gets lower, GDP comes down. The point is what was equilibrium is no longer. All right. Correlations will return. We talk a lot of here about correlations and how the dollar gold correlation isn't working like it used to. The dollar strong, gold is up. Why is that? It's because of the war. It's because of this. It's because of that. No, it's because they want the gold, right? And they want the silver too. They're just not as vocal about it yet. So those correlations we have contended are not broken. Those correlations are suspended while the market, again, recalibrates, rebalances at higher levels, okay? Normalcy will return after gold and silver are at their proper price. So they contend 
the correlations will return as tailwinds once things uh, get balanced again. So what they're saying is the dollar's strong and gold's not going down. When the dollar gets weak, gold's probably going to go up, isn't it? Okay, the dollar sells off. And that's that's one that we all know, but just to put a finer point on it, that's mercantilism. We need a weaker dollar to export. If we don't export stuff, we're not going to recover. Uh, we're not going to hold our place on the world stage. The other reason, the funny thing is these are the other reasons. Geopolitical risk is another reason. Uh, not diminishing, I'm just saying that's how big these other reasons are to them. Cold War 2.0. Geopolitical risk, meaning it's not necessarily manifest. It may go away. Doubtful, but it could go away. Bullion, this is very tactical. Bullion, 40% below all-time highs. It gives it room to move up. They're looking at the all-time. That's a, that's a that's a tactical thing. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have that as a reason to get long. But I would say it's a reason to not worry that gold is overbought. Okay, gold may be overbought, but it's not really at all-time highs. Mining fundamentals. This is what they get into a lot more of. Stocks are ready to run. Now, if they're saying stocks are ready to run, then guess what? That's because their clients are saying it. And if their clients are saying it, that's why they're pitching it. It's a very big self-reinforcing cycle we're entering now. All right. In bullion itself, spec loans are not as high as they look. It includes a trade idea. Again, it's another tactical reason. Uh that's true. I don't know that that's a reason to buy miners. Okay. Uh, a couple charts for you. There's like 30 charts in here. But here's a couple that I thought were worth showing. Official sector gold buying. So the orange is official sector means central banks or sovereign funds. All right. So you can just see it's going up. Uh, 2020. 20, Four is actually lower so far, but that's because the price is much higher. Next chart. Some major central banks have a low percentage of their reserves in gold. Take a look at China at 4.5%, it looks like, roughly. Now, their central bank reserves are a low percentage in gold terms. Now, that's the official number. We know gold, China has a lot more gold than that. But what they're getting at is, see all these countries that are let's hope being honest, the UK, Australia, India, Switzerland, Japan, Singapore's got more gold than that. Saudi Arabia has more gold than that. UAE has more gold than that. Brazil, Korea, they're all buyers of gold. If everyone else is buying gold, they're going to buy gold. And there's, there's a lot of validity to that. Asset allocation of gold, asset managers, Asset managers have a ridiculously low allocation to gold or gold exposure, right? To silver or silver exposure. Now, that doesn't always mean futures. It doesn't always mean GLD, SLV. It also means miners. How low is it? Well, that's 1%. These guys are in the 0.6%. What are they, 30% uh, in tech, 50% in tech? Give you an idea of how much upside there is when somebody says, you know what, I think I'll buy a little bit of gold today. Next chart. This chart is an uh, example of the, the decoupling uh, or reintermediation. That's the word they use, right? Yeah. Reintermediation. It's basically like saying uh, crypto is not uh, a hedge for a disaster anymore. So if you look in this area here, 21, 22, Crypto, the blue line, does extremely well. Volatile, but extremely well relative to gold. And that correlation is fictitious, I'm telling you. Uh, but it certainly was something to pay attention to. And people were saying, well, gold is being replaced uh, by Bitcoin. Silver is being replaced by Bitcoin because this is when the inflation started. And it's also when the stimulus check started. So this was not Bitcoin being a hedge for gold. It was Bitcoin participating with meme stocks at the time. Now, here we are in 2024, and you have gold doing what it's supposed to do uh, at all-time highs. Bitcoin also doing quite well. That's probably, again, because of another external factor, and that is the floodgates are being opened and the ETF is listed. But anyway, the point is, this was the aberration. Maybe the future, but it's not the present, that's for sure. 
Those are the charts. Those are some of the charts. Mark, let's move to market news. Market news. Uh, actually, there's a chart I want to show you here. See this here? People are going to start talking about the yen again. Again, this is something else we talked about last year. And it's coming to the U.S. Yield curve control did this. You use yield curve control, and one way or another, it's going to weaken your currency. And look, if you're shooting a gun in a crowded room, someone's going to get shot. Okay, if you're throwing a bowling ball at pins and there's gutter guards out, you're going to hit some pins, okay? So, you know, if you're using yield curve control to keep your long end rates low, you're going to make your short end drop. That's just how it works, okay? Uh, inflation manifests in the currency. Now, this is also... Uh, very important towards China. There's a lot of implications here. Put it this way, the yen has been historically the Asian dollar. It's been the uh, reserve currency. So I think what's happening to the yen will happen to the dollar, maybe not as dramatically, but eventually. Give you an idea, in the last week, the Japanese yen has lost, I don't know, between 4 and 7% purchasing power. So that's like going to the store and saying, and seeing prices go up in a week, 4 to 7%. That's after going up 7% over the last two months. So if it starts to feel like hyperinflation, yeah, that's what, I mean, it's not hyperinflation, but that's the whole concept. The concept is you get your money, you expect prices to go up, you go out and buy shit before prices go up, which makes prices go up, all right? Dangerous stuff. Market news. Tesla CEO Elon Musk arrived in Beijing on Sunday on an unannounced visit where he's expected to meet senior officials to discuss the rollout of full self-driving software and permission to transfer data overseas. China currently has the capacity to produce some 40 million vehicles a year, though it sells only around 22 million cars domestically. That's the press. And I'm not saying they're wrong. Jumping on China's back now. Uh, NASA says SpaceX is on track to demonstrate in space refueling of Starship next year, a critical technology for returning humans to the lunar surface using that vehicle. Never short Elon Musk. You can short his companies, but don't short Elon Musk. Despite cost at the largest U.S. banks, deposit costs, not despite cost at the largest U.S. banks rose more than interest revenue last quarter for the first time since the Federal Reserve began raising rates two years ago as savers demanded lenders share the benefits. For over a year and a half, these banks were getting paid five, five and a quarter rates and giving zero. So, you know, I have no, I have no pity for them. So what? Uh, Microsoft, Meta, and Google's parent company are going to keep spending money on AI. Okay, they need to spend. Germany's economic prospects are looking up after two grueling years of near zero growth. Uh, Consumer-led revival. Footnote, this is this is mercantilism. Watch. Germany was the engine of your making stuff, BMWs, Mercedes. We bought them from them, right? They were the high-end China, right? We bought our junk from China. We bought our high-end stuff from Germany and Japan. But now Germany can no longer compete economically as an export nation. And so they've been losing their industry. Eventually, they will come out as a consumer They'll be lending money to Europe and buying stuff because Germany is um, apparently uh, the wealthiest country in Europe from all the manufacturing that they spent. So Germany is going to become like, uh, look, when the euro breaks up, the Deutsche Mark will be the currency to own in Europe, <laughs> probably. All right. Uh, geopolitics. Israel is considering not going into Rafa uh, if they get some uh, hostages back. Uh, the most important news, I think, yesterday was that U.S. intelligence found that Russian President Putin did not directly order Navalny's death in February, according to the Wall Street Journal. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, <clears throat> Russia's Kremlin also said there would be a severe response if Russian assets are touched, and it's a pity that some in the West do not understand it. That's right. If we repurpose their money, that's not just that's not just freezing. That's confiscating and, and, and that's stealing. All right. 
Data, no data today. Big week for the uh, FOMC on Wednesday. Wednesday's your focus. And there you have it. I'm Vince. Have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching this morning's Markets and Metals Update with Vince Lancey. Brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals, where this week's special is Junk Silver for only $2.75 over spot. Junk Silver is the pre-1965 dimes and quarters and one of the products where we did see premium spike in the past couple of years. So you can find out more by calling us at 833-326-4653 or emailing Arcadia at milesfranklin.com. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.